Hello everyone, I'm CJ Wellerman. Don't forget to subscribe to our show. Now let's get into it. Evidence of the Uyghur genocide has been proven beyond a shadow of a doubt. Testimonies from survivors and former Chinese government officials, along with several troves of leaked Chinese Communist Party documents, prove upwards of 5 million Muslims have been detained and abused in a network of concentration camps in Xinjiang since 2017. We know Uyghur detainees are subjected to forced family separations, forced abortions, and forced sterilizations. It's part of the Chinese regime's heinous effort to annihilate the Muslim population. And we also know that many have been forced into human slavery, forced into drinking alcohol and eating pork during Ramadan, and other forms of abuse. But fresh new concerns for the Uyghur minority have emerged, with revelations China is expanding its nuclear test facilities in the Uyghur homeland of Xinjiang according to Japanese intelligence agencies and these satellite images. This is a frightening development because for millions of Muslims in Xinjiang, a terrible history promises to repeat itself. Because what I'm about to tell you is the untold story of how China used Uyghur Muslims as human guinea pigs for its nuclear weapons program from 1964 to 1996. It remains the most underreported story of the nuclear weapons age. But here's what you need to know that during a 28-year period, ending in the mid-1990s, China detonated 45 nuclear bombs in Xinjiang, or what Uyghur Muslims call independent East Turkestan. More than 200,000 Uyghurs were killed directly by these detonations, but those casualties tell only a small part of China's unimaginable cruelty, because more than 1 million Uyghurs also died from radiation exposure from 1964 to 1996. We also know from independent studies that Uyghurs are still dying in large numbers today from various kinds of cancer caused by radiation exposure and contamination of the territory's soil and water. These claims were corroborated by UK journalists who spoke with Chinese oncologist surgeons in 1998 about the situation in Xinjiang where the cancer rate among the Uyghur population is 35% higher than the rest of China. To protect them, their identities are heavily concealed. All I can say is that the chemotherapy department at the hospital is very, very busy. 90% of the patients have blood cancers or lymphatic cancers. Basically, cancer is everywhere in Xinjiang. The increase has been dramatic over the last 20 years or so, particularly in the South. But before we go on, we need your help to expose injustices in the Muslim world. And you can do this by supporting my journalism at patreon.com slash CJ You'll be helping me bring these stories to a wider audience. Thank you. Now back to our show. To put this heinous story into full context, we must travel back to 1964. The year the Chinese Communist Party produced this propaganda film to celebrate its successful detonation of a nuclear bomb in the Uyghur homeland. Three years later, China tests its first hydrogen bomb in East Turkestan, one that was 150 times more powerful than the atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki by US forces during the Second World War. But a further 44 nuclear bombs of this magnitude were detonated on the Uyghur homeland during this period. A few years after these tests began, Uyghur babies were suddenly being born with horrific birth defects. Some 50 years later, however, the Uyghur territory has the highest rate of birth defects in China with one Chinese doctor claiming that during the nuclear testing period, 80% of Uyghur children he was seeing had cleft palates. It's also important to acknowledge that these nuclear tests also killed thousands of Chinese soldiers who were stationed in Xinjiang. 
我们的一种光荣的使命嘛。那时候讲一种奉献，说我牺牲我是烈士，不牺牲我是功臣。他说你参加这个原子弹这个工作，你就受到这种抚恤和赞扬。肝癌，这个是肝癌，这个是脑瘤，糖尿病。在进现场的，没有好，不是本人得癌症。血液病也是个儿女传承，国家富强，我们就倒下。When I interviewed Dr. Enver Toddy, a Uyghur oncology surgeon, several years ago, he recalled the summer of 1973 when he was still in elementary school in Xinjiang. He said, and I quote, that for three consecutive days mountains of dirt fell from the sky, but without wind or any kind of storm. He also said that the sun and moon were unseen during this 72-hour period. His teacher explained it by saying there had been a storm on Saturn, but years later they realized that the dirt falling from the sky was radioactive dust from the detonation of a nuclear bomb within the province. It's for this reason East Turkestan has the highest rate of cancer in China. Now watch Dr. Toddy explain what he found when studying a sample of more than 2,000 cancer patients in Xinjiang during the 1990s. <coughs> Four cancers on the top. Mm -hmm. Those four cancers were leukemia, mm -hmm. lung cancer, mm -hmm. malignant lymphoma, mm -hmm. and thyroid cancer. I see. And those four cancers, mm -hmm. they have one thing in common, mm -hmm. which is related to radiation. Adding to these woes is the fact that many Uyghurs are far too poor to afford medical care. So all they can do is wait to die a slow and miserable death. But things are about to turn for the worse again, with Beijing seeking to triple its nuclear arsenal within the next three decades, as a means to deter the United States in the anticipated likelihood both countries go to war over Taiwan. Which means the Uyghur homeland will again be used by China to test new weapons and some of its old arsenal too, which hasn't been tested since the mid-1990s. These new tests will be conducted in the same place China detonated 45 nuclear bombs from 1964 to 1996, that place being Xinjiang, the home to 15 million Uyghur Muslims. When I spoke with a Chinese government official three years ago, he told me Uyghur concentration camp detainees serve only one of five purposes. Forced labor, COVID vaccine testing, organ harvesting, biological weapons testing, and proof of life videos. Clearly, this is a regime that cares nothing about human life, so it's critically important we expose China's human rights abuses to the world. 15 million Uyghur lives depend on it. Anyway, that's my time for today. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and we kindly ask you please support this endeavor by becoming a member of this show at patreon.com slash cjwellerman. We can't produce, sustain, and grow this show without your help, and we offer exclusive benefits to those who do. But for now, good night, good morning, wherever you are, and stay blessed. Thank you.